You are now tuned in to the Generation Y Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Generation Y Podcast. And we are super excited. For one, my man, where are you from? Originally from New York City, but now living down south in the Columbus area, Georgia. Uh, The Columbus, Georgia area, I should say, as this is where the military has brought me. So, uh, yeah, a, lot, a little ways from home, but uh, I'm loving it down here. Excellent. Excellent, man. Well, we appreciate you tuning in and uh, being able to inspire some people with everything that you're doing. So um, first off, we connected through um, through Marcus, Marcus Black and everything. And uh, for one, um, I, you heard from uh, about us through the podcast that he was on, correct? Yeah, I saw him repost something and I saw the name of your podcast. I said, man, that's pretty interesting. I know I want to check that out. And then I uh, went, proceeded to go and check you guys out. And I love what you do and what you stand for. So it was a perfect match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, man. Well, um, I'm, I'm excited to jump into this, man. So you said you were um, you've been stationed at, in Georgia, correct? Yes, I'm stationed in Georgia. So I've been okay. down here for almost almost a year now because I graduated college back in May of 2020. And then yeah. almost immediately came down here to begin my training. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate your service, man. Shout out to you for uh, thank you. <laughs> um, really being out here, man, serving the people. Um, so man, tell tell us a little bit about Devin, man. What uh what got you for one in the military and then also like um everything that you were doing? We were we we're texting over um over some of the things that you're already doing, and um sounds like you're killing it, man, out there. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff. Now, my full time job is obviously being in the military that consumes a lot of time. But I'm also right. really passionate about a lot of other stuff out outside of that. So I'm a yeah. certified professional coach and I specifically coach mostly individuals in a life coaching type of scenario. And yeah. I'm also a speaker. I'm working with some some pretty well-known people to just help craft my storytelling and how I speak and just become a better speaker in general so that I can use my voice to change the world. And then I have my own podcast as well, the One Life podcast that I created a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I am creating other different types of programs in which I cultivate and bring together communities of people who want to grow and develop and want to take themselves to the next level. So those are just some of the things that I do in a co- in addition to being in the military. So my schedule is pretty, pretty tight. I'm always trying to get one step more in a, one step closer in the direction of my dream. So that requires a lot of effort, but right. it's all worth it because I'm, I'm not living for now. I'm living for the person that I'll be remembered as. Ah, okay. Already starting it off. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, man. So what what, what got you into wanting to be a life coach and everything? Man, I've always had a passion ever since I was 14 or 15. My dad said something to me that radically transformed my life back then. I was a sophomore in high school. I was in between my sophomore and junior year. It was the middle of the summer. And he just calls me out one day, Devin, get out here. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? What, what did I do now? That's what I was like. What did I do now? So right. he sits me down at the table and he says, Devin, I want you to answer this question for me. All right, dad, what is it? What makes you different than anybody who has ever achieved anything great in this world? And mm. I sit there at 16 years old, like, Duh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. Cause you're 16. All I want to go back, go back in my room and play call of duty. And this guy right. is trying to tell me something about life. So I didn't even answer him. And he says, Devin, there's nothing that separates you from those that achieve excellence in their life. They put on their pants one they put on their pants one leg at a time just like you do. They put on their shirt one arm at a time just like you do. So I ask you again, what is different about you than them? Yeah. And I quickly got up and walked away to my room to continue playing. I think it was probably <laughs> Black Ops at that time. Right, right. And and I quickly forgot about what he told me. But what he did in that moment was that he planted a seed of greatness in me. But wow. the thing I'll mention very briefly is that a seed can only grow if the soil that it's in is rich. Mm. Because if the, if the seed is planted in poor soil, it won't grow. In fact, right. there's a really good story about there's a... a, a a tree called a German, uh, excuse me, the General Sherman tree. It's a sequoia tree. It's, okay. I think it might be the biggest tree in the world. 
And then there's also the bonsai tree. If you ever watched Karate Kid, wax on, wax yeah. off. Daniel son, right. here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Now, if you compare those two, they start off as the same exact size, less than one ounce. They start off as I think way smaller than that. But if you if you look at them right now, the Ger the Sherman tree is one of the biggest in the world, while the bon bonsai is one of the smallest in the world. Well, why is that? Well, you see, what happened was that the Sherman sequoia tree was raised in rich soil. It was fertilized. It constantly got sun and water. It was taken care of. Yeah. So it had the ability to grow. But mm -hmm. the bonsai tree, when it was young, it was ripped out of the soil and it had its roots cut off. So it uh, couldn't grow. So in yeah. a similar way, I started to focus on. I don't want to be the bonsai tree. I want to be the Sherman sequoia tree and I yeah. want to grow. But that requires me to have a solid foundation, a rich soil. So I quick. So then I went and I went on my personal development journey, which started really about eight years or so ago now. And the reason I mention all of that is because I'm really passionate about showing other people that you could tell yourself as much as you want. You could use affirmations as much as you want, do whatever you want. But if you're not building the foundations of your life, then it's all for nothing because yeah. the seeds you plant will not grow unless the, the soil is rich. That's real, man. That's real. That's crazy, man. So th that was a, that was the turning point for you from that conversation of your dad. And that just resonated through you. Through yeah, absolutely. Life. Prior to that, I was just a mediocre person, just like <laughs> er, er, I was just one of everybody else. And I would look right, at the right. people who were exceeding and doing things on a, extraordinary level and i would tell myself things like it must be nice to do what they do unfortunately right. i'm not as smart as they are they're just naturally born that way they're just gifted they're just there because that's how they were born and right. the rest of us we just stuck where we are but when he told me that it really challenged me to think what if i can be the same as them or what if i can even go above where they are and that's yeah. what i did that's crazy man and, and how old are you 23, 23, man. So you recently out of like pretty much college, right? Yep. About a year now, actually. Yeah. Almost a year. Congrats. You made it. You made it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We're just getting started. Right. Exactly. That's what's up, man. So a lot of the people and the audience and stuff that are on our podcast are a lot of like entrepreneurs, um, even people that just recently got out of high school, got out of college and all that type of stuff. And so um, even for, you know, this type of age group is that's that whole thing of building your foundation is very crucial. Right. And 100%. so, um, what, what was the, what, was there any like struggle within Devin? Um, I mean, obviously you got like the mental side, you got everything, you know, that you're dealing with, um, emotionally and everything like that. But what was the, what was that turmoil that, uh, Devin kind of had to go through to be able to get to where you're at right now? Devin had to go to through a whole lot of turmoil. Now, I didn't go through turmoil specifically during college. That was a pretty, pretty good, good ride for me. Yeah. The turmoil came when I was younger in elementary and middle school. I grew okay. up in Queens, New York, which is actually the most diverse borough within New York City. Yeah. It just so happened my biological father had left me when I was young. The last time I saw him, he handed me a pair of jeans through the window when I was three years old. And then he turned around and looked at me. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. But now I know that, that he looked back because that was the last time he would ever see me. Yeah. Luckily, my, I had a bonus father come into my life named Louie. Now, Louie is my hero. He's done everything for me. He's been the, the man that's raised me. Yeah. Once my mom met him, we moved to another place within Queens. This place is, to give you some context, it's called Broad Channel. People that live in Queens never even heard of Broad Channel. So yeah. that's how small it is. It's one mile long. It's literally an island surrounded by water. So in order to get on or off, you have to cross a bridge. So nobody comes in unless they absolutely have to. But right. also, when I moved to this neighborhood, I was the darkest person that a lot of these people had ever seen in their life. 
Wow. And as a result, what I thought was going to be an opportunity for me to make friends and grow and, and do what kids do, the next six years of my life were riddled by racism, harassment, bullying. I tell a story in the book I'm writing where I went to the park. Someone took my basketball, they kicked it into the weeds. And of course, I'm upset because they did that. I went yeah. to go home to walk home and I decided I was going to walk through the playground. I went to walk through the playground only to come to find out that there was about five people there waiting for me. I tried to run for the gate. The gate was locked because they wanted to trap me in there. And then I got a little beaten. I got a beaten, went home with a nice black eye and bloody nose. But that was my daily basis, that struggle. Wow. I'll share two points with you. There came two turning points that I could identify right off the bat, the biggest ones in yeah. the fifth grade after going through this for about three years now, because when you're a kid, all you want to do is be accepted. So when this is all happening, it, it hurts a lot. Yeah. But the, the thing that hurts more than what you could see on the body is the internal scars that nobody could see. Facts. Yeah. So my parents asked me this question, Devin, just let us transfer you to another school. Let us get you out of this mess. We'll send you to a private school. We can't really afford it. But for you, we'll do yeah. it. And I turned to them and I said, no. <laughs> I had no idea at the moment why I was saying no. But now as I reflect back, I want the listeners, especially the younger ones, to listen to what I'm about to say. Yeah. If I would have said yes to going to another school, I would have allowed somebody else to determine my future for me besides me. Because yeah. if I would have said yes, it wouldn't have been because I wanted to go to another school. It would have been because they influenced me through yeah. their hatred to go to another school. So now that taught me that the only person who's going to determine my future for me is the man that's looking back in the mirror. That's yeah. me. That's the right. second point that I'll mention here came in the eighth grade. There's a quote. There's a quote by a man named Walter Elliott. He says that perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after the other. So for yeah. six years of my life, every day was one of those short races, not yeah. knowing what was going to happen. Well, in the eighth grade, I end up I wound up running to be the president of that school. And I wound up becoming the president of the school by gaining the votes. So the people that bullied me for six years, they were the same ones who voted for me to become the president of that school. Dang, so the, yeah. The thing is, is that it's going to hurt, but I live by the motto of outlast because mm -hmm. the devil's in the works, man. He's always trying to get us to go a certain way. Yeah. But for me, what I've noticed about the devil or whatever it is, what, whatever evil in life that you believe in is that if you don't give up life, the devil, whatever you want to call it, will. Because mm -hmm. it's going to look and say, I've tried to crack you time and time and time again. You just won't quit. <laughs> You're right. I guess I'm going to have to. So yeah. that was my season of tribulation. I've had some other other ones throughout my life. But for yeah. six years, I went through hell. But on the other side was heaven, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. That's what's up, man. Congrats, bro. I mean, congrats. You got a president of the school, man. I know. So and, and I just want to mention that that set. And now, by the way. I'm so grateful for that time. That was yeah. the best thing that could have ever happened to me because it enabled me to become mentally tough, yeah. physically tough because I started to go to boxing and stuff because I didn't, you know, I wanted to fight back a little bit, yeah. but it was the, it was the greatest. But if I would have given up, I would have never been able to experience the beauty on the other side. So I had to endure the pain. That's real, man. That's real. I think a lot of people even... Um, I mean, even us like generation Y, whenever we talk about anti-bullying and all this kind of stuff, it's like it's hard to be able to, um, you know, tell a kid that bullying is never going to be a thing. Right. And so, like, even for that is um, how, how do you deal with those hard situations and how do you let that shape you? And like even the, the things that you were saying earlier is like, are you going to take this circumstance and let those people have power over you? Or are you going to be able to make this a, uh, a learning curve? You know what I'm saying? And like go through this hard situation and be able to come out the other side, either a leader or just a stronger person. 
You know what I'm saying? And so like, even for, um, you know, generation Y, whenever we're talking to these kids, it's like, you know, there's so many people that come from so many different backgrounds, so many different home lifestyles and everything like that. It's like, you're trying to cast a net and a broad um, topic into the sea of people, you know, and hoping that it catches, you know, a couple of uh, groups of people and everything. And it's like, you know, like, how are, how are you going to be able to handle these hard situations? Are they going to shape you or are they going to crush you? You know what I'm saying? So um, I commend you for that, man. I, I think uh, some of the toughest people out here and some of the most like influential people, they went through some of the hardest times in life. Absolutely. You know? They went through some some, you know, what? they went through it. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, man. And so, like, I really appreciate your uh, grind, man. And everything that you're doing and you're 23, you're going to be writing a book and everything like that. Like, what, what's your book about? It's about the journey that I just described to you. And it's going to be about how I was able to overcome that. And then eventually that turning point was kind of when my dad sat me down. That's when I went from mediocre to be, you know, to put everything into reference. Before my dad had that discussion with me, I was ranked 60 or 57th in my class out of like 200. After that conversation with my dad, I went back to school and I was ranked fifth in my class Wow! based off that discussion because I started putting myself on the same playing field as people and saying, what if I can do that instead of why can't I do that? So the thing I want to mention, number one, is the moment that we begin to ask ourselves better questions is the moment that our lives begin to change because Mm -hmm. where our attention goes, energy flows. So if Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on why I can't do it, I'm never going to do it. If I focus on how I can do it, I'm going to find ways to do it. So from the kid who was rejected every day of my life to eventually being rejected from 10 out of 12 colleges, but then going on to St. John's University in New York City and being a valedictorian, perfect grade point average, ranked a top 100 business student in America. Wow. Out beating people from Harvard, Yale, whatever. Coming from a kid that in society's eye wasn't supposed to do none of this. Yeah. So I'm just telling a little bit about that journey and it's a memoir type style, but I'm also putting in points along the way that I learned from people like my parents, from people like Miss Edwards, who was my guidance counselor. She was actually the only other colored person in that school. So her and I were able to connect because nobody else really understood what was happening. So it's just all about, the story that I went through, because the one thing that I don't like, and it's no fault of anybody's, but societies is that people think that their story doesn't matter. Yeah. But your story can change somebody's world. Now, the thing is, is you may never know it, but I guarantee if you share that story, you will shape somebody, you will Mm -hmm. help somebody. You might even save somebody from taking their life because of your words. So don't be afraid to share your story because that story can help somebody else rewrite their story. And then it just keeps going. It's a big ripple effect. So use your, use your voice, use your, use the pen, use your keyboard, let people know who you are and what you've been through, because guess what? You're still standing here. That means you've been through it. You went through it. Now tell people so that they can learn from what you went through. Yeah. Yeah. If you're still standing here, you still have an opportunity, you know, Um, and so like, what, what are some of the excuses that like you kind of had to fight through, you know, on yourself, you know what I'm saying? You going through a turmoil and I know even for myself, you know, like, um, cause I, I attempted suicide twice, uh, in my freshman year of college. And like, even, even for myself is like, I went through, you know, um, just that whole rejection type feeling that nobody really understands. Nobody really is hearing me and all that kind of stuff. And so being able to go through, like the excuses part that I dealt with was more like, OK, I don't have this type of degree in nonprofit work. I don't have this type of thing that, you know, other people have got. So why don't they go ahead and, you know, impact the world with what they're doing? But nobody had the same type of drive and nobody had the same type of ideas that I was working with. So it's like it was my it was, I felt like I was making a pledge to myself. It was my job to be able to actually like press through those excuses 
and actually come out on the other side and like keep going with everything and the visions and dreams that I was coming up with. You know what I'm saying? So for Devin, man, what was uh, some of the like excuses and even maybe even today that you kind of have to fight through um, to be able to make it work and keep grinding? Well, first off, thank God that you're still here because you're doing God's work on this earth. And I, gen I genuinely believe that. So first, yeah, man. sorry, I accidentally, uh, you might have to edit that. I just hit pause on accident. So I apologize, <laughs> man. I'm sorry about that. So yeah. I'll, I'll pick up. So first off, I want to acknowledge you and, and say that, thank God you are still here because you are doing God's work. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Because what you're doing for, for the generation, why I love that name first off is, is unbelievable. Yeah. And you're an example for everybody to follow. Now, That's what right. I want, you're very welcome. What I want people to understand is that excuses are normal. Mm. They're, they're normal. Yeah. Why? Because, well, our brains are literally designed to keep us safe. So anytime that you do anything that's outside of your comfort zone, the excuses start to come because that's what your brain perceives as danger. Right. You're doing yeah. something that's outside of your habit pattern. Danger, danger, danger. Your mind does everything, everything, everything to keep you away from doing that thing. So habits are normal. Habits. I mean, excuse me. Excuses are normal. Yeah. Habits are formed. You know, I was listening to something the other day. It says that we don't determine our future. We can't control our future, but we can control our habits and our habits control our future. That's real. So some of the excuses that I've been going through recently that I recently broke through was this one. And I know that this will resonate with your audience. I'm too young. Yeah. I'm too young. How can I coach people that are 40, 50 years old if I'm 22? Because I just turned 23. How can yeah. I coach people that are double my age? I right. haven't even worked. How can I coach somebody that's been a professional for 10 years? Right, right. Then I came across, well, first I have a mentor. Her name is Sophia. Phenomenal woman. She would always tell me, Devin, nobody cares about your age. They just care about the value that you bring to them. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. Repeat. What did you just say? <laughs> nobody cares about your age. They just care about the value that you bring. And I said, wow, that is amazing. And then I came across a quote by a man named Mark Twain. And he said that age is nothing but mind over matter. If you yeah. don't mind, they it don't, don't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Right, right, right. When I so when I saw that, I said, "Whoa, you're talking to me <laughs> right now." So that yeah. was one of the biggest excuses for me was, "I'm too young." But then I broke through that, and then I have clients that are double more than double my age because yeah. I got over that limiting belief or that excuse. Another excuse is I don't have time. Mm. I don't have time. I'm a full time active duty military soldier. That requires a lot of time. And actually, it was actually one of my friends that just said this to me the other day. She said, Devin, you need to stop. Stop. What? <laughs> stop she, what? Said, yeah. she said, you're making all these excuses as to why you can't build your own website. Mm. You're talking about you don't have time. You're talking about full time job. But you haven't told me the reasons why you can make it work. Right. And I think that that is so crucial for people to understand is that. We can tell ourselves we don't have time, but we actually make time for the things that are important to us. Let's let's face it. Right. We make things that are actually we make time for things that are actually important. That's just the way it is. Right. Uh, and then the other thing, the other excuse, I honestly haven't identified the excuse, but it's good. I'm talking about this now is that my biggest problem or the one area in life that I really have to get disciplined in is my relationship with food because I grew Food, food, like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to go eat after this. All right, man. Hey, yeah, so, yeah. But, but what I'm saying is I grew up in a family that we just went out to eat all the time because my mother was disabled. She couldn't cook at, she couldn't stand and cook, you know, meals all the time. So we went right. to the diner, we went here, we went there. So I grew up eating, you know, French fries and paninis almost every day. So that's hey, what I came to love. So right. now I'm at a point where I'm an athlete. I run ultra marathons, right? That, that isn't, in line with how I should be eating. Right. You know, so right now that's probably my biggest hurdle is staying consistent with a healthy diet, knowing that it will enable me to become a better athlete, a better person and just yeah. live a longer life. And the, I think the excuse that I, I use there is that 
the shitty is excuse me if i curse the bad food is yeah. is in it's so easy to get it's convenient right meanwhile the healthy food you got to cook it you got to stand there you got to cater to it I so for me, it's it's yeah okay let me just do this it's quick and i think a lot of people can relate to that people that want to lose weight but aren't losing weight now in right. no way am i you know am i am, am i fat no but yeah but I don't think that I'm actualizing my potential in that area, if that makes sense. Gotcha. So for me, those are the couple of things that I will say. And I figure that I throw a challenge in there myself because let's face it, we all have things we got to work on. The only problem, the only problem is, is that very few people are willing to admit that because we live in the social media fantasy world where everybody's perfect, man. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff to work on. I'm not perfect. And let me tell you, if you're listening to this, you're not perfect neither. <laughs> might yeah, be yeah. better than me let me tell you right 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 yeah yeah i feel that man that's it's a big thing man i mean we we compare so much um online and uh, online is like everybody's highlight reels and everybody's you know vacations and everybody's you know best angles you know what i'm saying and so like how do you how do you compare somebody w with like your worst day compared to somebody's best day you know what i'm saying like how how can you even you know compare that like that doesn't even make sense even like as a bystander way you know what i'm saying and so um i think like even even with students man i feel like there is so much consumption you know what i'm saying that's going on and okay. just like with food is like what are you putting in um into your brain what are you putting into your uh, body you know and everything like that is it healthy is it gonna be you know dwindling you down or what you know so um, I feel like that's a huge thing, part of mental health, you know? Oh, 100%. And I'll comment on that very quickly. There's a quote I heard by a man named Dennis Jackson. He said, what you tune into, you turn into. Mm. And that's a deep quote. That's, that's a lot yeah. deeper than like those five or six words right there. Because yeah. it's so true what you said about consumption. There's right. there's a Zig Ziglar. I'm not sure if you know who he is, but one of the giants of all time in the field of personal development. He tells a story, a fictional story that he goes into somebody's house. He has a trash can and he starts pouring the trash all over the person's floor. The person comes out of their room. He says, Zig, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to shoot you. I'm going to I'm going to whip you until you cry or I'm going to call the cops. <laughs> yeah. So obviously Zig is going to go. And he's going to pick up the trash and he's going to take it out of the person's house because the person was pissed off. Right. But what about the garbage that we consume every day? Yeah. Nobody's getting pissed off about that. Nobody's ready to come out in arms about that. You know, we're going through the pandemic, the, the coronavirus. I just made a podcast that we need to practice social distancing. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about standing six feet behind another person in a grocery yeah. line. I'm talking about social distancing yourself from people that don't enable you to get closer to your goals. Mm, that's real. right. Because yeah. the real pandemic, yes, the pandemic has killed hundreds of thousands of people. God bless their souls. Right, right. But the moment that we surround ourselves and we consume things that aren't a lot in a line with what we want to accomplish is the moment that our dreams get killed. Yeah. So Definitely. we need to practice social distancing from people that aren't aligned with who we are and then yeah. start consuming the right things, which looks like listening to positive and motivational tapes or right. videos on YouTube, whatever the case may be. Don't or listen. This podcast. Or, of <laughs> course, or this podcast, man. Any podcast that's per, per, personal, personal development that's just right. talking about the goodness in the world instead of listening and turning on CNN or Fox and listening yep. to all the garbage in the world. Because yep. what you tune into, what you tune into is what you turn into. So be yep. careful and and make sure you're treading those waters lightly. That is real, man. What you what you tune into is what you turn into, man. That's that's fire. I'm gonna have to use that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. Um, man, that's that's a uh, that's amazing. So um, you're writing a book um, and everything like that. You started the business. Um, you're a pro professional development of people. Yeah, pretty much. And so like what a like taking that, you know, life coaching even deeper and further, like, are you wanting to go into like even more of like the physical side of it or you, how, how how deep are you wanting to take this uh, life coaching? 
Yeah. So the life coaching, I would say, is probably my second priority. My first priority is using my voice to change the world. And yeah. what does that look like? That looks like being the number one speaker in the world within 10 years. And yeah. that's, that's going to happen. So I, I depend on you to check in with me in 10 years from now and see if that you. happened. And I guarantee you it will. Don't but change the number and we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, besides that, the coaching aspect, I like working with people in a way that first off, coaching is not about telling you how to live your life. As a coach, all that I do is ask you powerful questions that enable you to look somewhere in yourself that you wouldn't typically go by yourself. Yeah. So I'm just a, someone that's there to support you. And yeah. I ask you powerful questions and I get you to answer your own questions. I don't do anything. I don't give you advice. I don't make suggestions. No, you drive your car. I sit in the passenger seat and say, Oh, did you notice that waterfall? Did you notice that that mountain range is really nice? So that's what I really love about coaching. So yeah. along with my coaching, I'm also offering different programs. I have a, a, an accountability program that we meet twice a week. It's, uh, it's, it's for a month long is the duration of it. And then if people want to come back, they come back for the next month. And that yeah. is really, really, really awesome because we work on our goals and our dreams during one hour a week. That's very powerful. So looking at it going forward, um, once I'll see what my military future looks like, whether I stay in or say, let's say I get out of the military in three years from now, yeah. that will be supplementary to my speaking career because I fully intend to be a professional speaker speaking on dozens of stages by then. But right. then again, I want to make sure that my coaching is part of who I am because I love it. You know, I, it's just something that I like to do, but yeah. I will say that I will probably, um, perform a lot of corporate corporate trainings as well, because That's I have a, a, a real desire and love for workshops and enabling communities of people to come in one place and to interact in interactive workshops with one another. And I think workshops uh, are, are great for that. So yeah, man, my coaching cool. business is really expanding and it's really growing. So I'm so happy about that. Uh, and then my speaking is really what I'm most excited about. And then writing a book, man, you know, I want everybody to look at your life and you might be listening to me be saying that this guy has it all together. This guy has it all together. Cause as I was just saying that it sounds like, Whoa, the guy is doing all of this stuff. Right, but man, right. I struggle just as any, just as much as anybody else. Yeah, you know, yeah. I hit, I hit snooze just as much as anybody else. Man. But I, but what I want people to know is that when you have a desire, a desire to go somewhere in specific, a destination that you know, you want to go to, you start to get in the driver's seat of your life. Most people live in the passenger seat. And when I mean this, I mean that they look at people who are doing phenomenal things and they just say, how are they doing it? They have no idea how to do this because they're just in the passenger seat like 99% of the world is. Right. But when you get in the driver's seat of your life and you take accountability and say that I am responsible for creating the future that I want. Okay, now that I know that, what do I want? Even yeah. more importantly, who do I want to become? Because yeah. as I mentioned earlier, the very first thing that I said is that my goal in life is to create a powerful legacy. In yeah. fact, I want, I believe that I won't start to live until I die. Meaning yeah. that what I do here on this earth will continue to live on for years and years and years and years to come. What right. people see now is nearly the preview of what's to come, as Edison yeah. once said. So, yeah. Oh man, that's some, that's some, uh, powerful stuff, man. Not by me, but just thinking about life in general, when yeah. you, when you have an idea of where you want to go, nobody could stop you beside yourself, but yeah. there's going to be struggles along the way. And I am no different. That's real, man. That is, that's super real. A lot of people live for the life and the moments, but they, they don't see the legacy that they could build and the platform and foundation that they can leave behind. hundred percent. Let me mention that that takes sacrifice, Facts. sacrifice. I didn't yeah. go out during college. I went out maybe four or five times to a party right? because I knew that my goals weren't in a line in alignment with that type of life. The problem right. is with people is that they would say they want to do something, but then their actions 
are in direct contradiction with that which they said. Every right. level that you want to reach in life requires a new you. Yeah. Four questions that I'll end this on. Number one, who are you? When I ask people that, they'll give me their job title. They'll right. give me their name. They'll give me what they do as a side hustle. They'll give me everything besides their identity, right. who they actually are in the core. Number yeah. two, who do you want to become? Because we're always, if we're playing the game of life right, in my opinion, we're always in a constant pursuit of becoming someone bigger, better, and more. So yeah. who is that for you? Who do you want to become? Notice I didn't say, what do you want to become? Who? Right. What does that mean? What are the virtues, values, and principles that you want to have? Yeah. Is it integrity, communication, whatever it may be for you? Who do you want to become? Number four, number three, who do you have to become in order to become the person you ultimately want to become? Meaning every level that you reach in life requires a new you. The, yeah. defini the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Right. If you act that way, you'll always just get what you always got, right? If you always done what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. So therefore, right. you have to evolve. And yeah. then lastly, this is the most powerful one. Who do you have to unbecome in order to become the person that you want to become? Yeah. So, man, yeah. that's that's my four part question that I think is really powerful. And if people reflect on it because they don't teach you none of this in school, man. Yes, you know, and, none, and it's a shame because I had to read all of these books you see behind me. I didn't read all of them, by the way. I mean, I read I, okay, I read I read a lot of them, but not all of them. But right, I had right. to I, I had to educate and invest in myself because yeah. the world won't invest in you. So yep. you have to take it upon you to invest in you. Definitely, man. You got to invest in yourself so you can invest into the world. It's like, hey, man. they're definitely not going to invest in you. Like you're saying, man. Well, I really appreciate your time, man. I know you got to head out. Um, where, where's a good place that everybody can follow you at? Sure. Yeah. Everybody can follow me at I am Devin Rodriguez on Instagram. So I am Devin, D-E-V-E-N, and then Rodriguez. Uh, I also have a Facebook page. You can follow it at Devin Rodriguez. I have a TikTok. I am Devin Rodriguez. And then I'm also going to be having a website coming in the next two to three weeks. And that's just going to be DevinRodriguez.com. So if you want to learn more about my services or interested in joining one of my accountability programs, whatever the case may be, if you just want to say hi to me and check out what the hell's going on in Devin's life, that's a good place to go as well. So I appreciate you having me on this podcast, man. You're a true gentleman and your <laughs> listeners are privileged to have you. Man, you just gassing, bro. I really appreciate that, man. That's a, that means a lot. Well, I really appreciate your time, man. And for real, anybody that is tuning in right now, be sure to follow Devin Rodriguez on anything and everything. Um, and be sure to tune into everything that he's got coming up and everything like that. And if you're looking for life coaching, counseling, anything like that, go to my man, Devin Rodriguez. Or a good podcast that I forgot to mention, the good One podcast. Life Podcast. You can find it on all platforms, the One Life Podcast. So that being said, man, thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate man. you. And I know that, I don't know if people are going to be able to see this, but you have something on your, says, on your head. It says, honor. Honor. You, my sir, you, sir, are an honorable dude. Hey, man, I really appreciate the time, man. We'll, uh, we'll stay connected for sure, all right? Sounds good, man. Talk soon. Yes, sir. Peace.